Good morning and welcome to this first Sunday in Lent. We begin today with the gift of music, Precious Lord, played by Mary Snorick on the piano, as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. And good morning once again. Welcome to this first Sunday in Lent. We are humbled that you've joined us this morning for worship on the radio. Our radio broadcast today is given by John and Ann Pate as a gift to the congregation. Thank you so much, John and Ann, for your love and faithfulness to one another and to your family and to our community and congregation. And thank you so much for sponsoring this important radio ministry today. The joyful sound, the bells of Emmanuel, ring today thanks to a gift once again from Charles and Gladys Chase this week in memory of Lynette. In addition to all the online and virtual worship opportunities, we are now offering in-person worship. So you can join us on eight, at 8.30 on Sunday mornings. We will follow the same physical distancing and masking procedures we did this fall. Um, However, uh, at this time, there's no need to pre-register. You can show up on Sunday mornings. We have a capacity for around 50 people at this time and some overflow space available in our fellowship hall. If you do have any questions, you can call the church office, 631-2738. And speaking of masks, um, just a reminder, while vaccines are rolling out for the next many months, it's still important to wear masks. And if you need a mask or two or three, we have some very nice masks, thanks to the generosity of Pam Nelson, and those are available at our church building. You can pick those up during the week or certainly when you stop by for an in-person service on Sunday morning. Wednesday uh, is a wonderful time in the season of Lent, and even though uh, we're not celebrating uh, quite the way that we're used to with soup suppers and evening prayer in person, We are offering a Wednesday Holden Evening Prayer Service that will be available on KWAD each week at 6.30 p.m. That's uh, beginning February 24th and running every Wednesday through March 24th. If you're on Facebook, you can uh, experience that service live on Facebook or recorded later on Facebook. 6.30 in the evening each Wednesday, Holden Evening Prayer. And speaking of Facebook, we certainly invite you to be part of our Facebook campus. This is a new companion ministry to what we do in person and in other ways, but we're very excited. If you're on Facebook, uh, we'd love to have you join us uh, in one of our groups for some discussion and faith growth. So you can visit our Facebook page. Just search for Wadena Emanuel on Facebook. And when you find our page there, click on the Groups tab and request uh, to join Emmanuel Lutheran Church online. That's our principal um, small group there, and there's discussions happening there every week. And there are other groups that might interest you as well. So check it out, our Facebook campus. Just a couple of other announcements here. Our community dinner is coming up February 25th, 
and Emmanuel is responsible for that dinner. So Peggy Larson is looking for help. You can help serve from 4 to 6.30 p.m. that day, February 25th. Or if you're able to help with meal prep, uh, that will happen in the morning on February 24th and 25th. So get in touch with Peggy if you're able to help with any of those shifts. That will make a big difference with the community dinner. Catholic Charities is doing a frozen meal distribution on March 4th, and that will be in Emmanuel's parking lot from 1 to 2 p.m. Again, March the 4th. That is the same time as the monthly NAPS program, if you're familiar with that. But you don't have to be part of the NAPS program to be part of this frozen meals program. It's a simple one-time registration. It is for folks 60 and older. 60 and older, and you qualify for up to 30 frozen meals. It's a tremendous opportunity. Please spread the word about that and mark your calendars if you are over the age of 60 for March 4th in Emmanuel's parking lot, 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, Just a reminder that in the month of February, we have decided to add a service of communion to our radio broadcast. So we will celebrate communion a little later in our radio broadcast today. And uh, starting this Sunday, today, uh, we're going to serve both bread and wine from our altar. So you can join us in receiving communion in both kinds. So um, grab some bread, a cracker will do, and wine or juice for communion. If you only have bread, that's okay. Be assured that even in that one element, Jesus Christ is in with, under, and through. But this is a great time to get that together. And if if you'd like a home communion kit for future services, um, whether that's on the radio, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can call the church office and just indicate, you know, if you would like a kit with wine or grape juice, and if you'd like that kit delivered or if you'd like to pick it up. So call the church office again, 631-2738. All right, those are the announcements that we have this morning. Let's jump back into worship. Grab those hymnals, turn to hymn number 838 as we sing together, Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son of God and Son of Man, truly I'd love Thee, truly I'd serve Thee,
we join together in the prayer of the day. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For special music today, uh, we offer a song that I had a chance to record a little earlier in the week, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Lord, throughout these forty days, you prayed and kept the fast. Inspire repentance for our sin and free us from our past. You strove with Satan and you won. Your faithfulness endure. Lend us your nerve, your skill, and trust in God's eternal word. Though parched and hungry, yet you prayed and fixed your mind above. So teach us to deny ourselves that we may know God's love. Be with us through this season, Lord, and all our earthly days, that when the final Easter dawn Join in heaven's praise. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you came to Crosstalk today. My name is Pastor Megan. The Bible story that we here today in worship is from uh, the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, and we hear about Jesus being baptized and then being sent out into the wilderness to start his ministry. And this really cool thing happens at Jesus' baptism. The heavens rip apart, and the Holy Spirit comes down on Jesus like a dove. And then God says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, which is kind of like uh, saying, this is my kid and I love him so much. I bet you have a grown-up in your life that says that to you. I hope you do. Well, here's a really cool thing. When we get baptized, God gives us the Holy Spirit too. And God celebrates just like when Jesus was baptized and said, this is my son, I love him so much. God sees us and says, that is my child, that's my son, that's my daughter, that's my kid, I love you so much. That's what happens at our baptism and every day after. So here's our story for today. Come to the water, little one. Come to the water, little one. Come and meet God's baptized son. Jesus welcomes everyone. Come to the water, child of grace. Come to your baptismal place. Feel a cross upon your face. Go from the water, baptized one. 
Go and show what God has done. Let your light shine like the sun. Now your new life has begun. Pretty cool, huh? When we're baptized, uh, there's a special thing that happens, right? We, we pour the water in to the big bowl. And then the pastor says some words about God's love and God's care and God's gift to us. And then uh, we get the water on our foreheads three times in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes if this is a baby, this is when the baby cries. Uh, because water on your, on your forehead when you're a baby can be kind of startling. But here's the really neat thing. We can remember our baptism all the time. Do you see the purple up here on the altar? That's because we're in the season of Lent. And that means thinking about how we can turn back to God and remember how much God loves us and cares for us. So I have a challenge for you. You don't just have to come to church to remember your baptism. You can just use the water in your sink or in your bathtub uh, or in your water bottle, right? So uh, the next time you're helping wash dishes or the next time you're washing your face before school or taking a shower or uh, the next time you even take a drink of water. Now, you've got to be careful if you're taking a drink of water. You don't want to make too big of a mess. But I want you to dip your finger in the water, whether you're washing your face or, or brushing your teeth or getting ready for the day. And then trace the cross on your forehead in water. Remember that you are a beloved child of God now and forever. That God loves you so much and gives you the Holy Spirit to be strong and courageous no matter what you face. I can't wait to see you again. Have a great week. Our first reading on this first Sunday of Lent is from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. I'm reading from the NRSV translation. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. If you have a hymnal at home, please find Psalm 25 in the front of your hymnals, preceding the hymn section, and read the indented sections with me. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. 
Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast, love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. Our second reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. Again, I'm reading from the NRSV translation. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which the prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today, I am 177 days sober. And next Sunday, I will celebrate my six-month alcohol-free milestone. When I quit drinking, I wasn't in danger of losing my job or my family or any of the other tragic consequences that we often associate with substance use disorder. Instead, it was the realization, the waking up to the fact that my one or two glasses of wine every so often had turned into two glasses every night and then four, and then sometimes even six. I tried to give up alcohol for Lent last year, but I kept finding reasons to celebrate feast days and take a break from my discipline. I was worried because I had tried to give myself rules and boundaries, and I could not manage to keep them. And it was definitely affecting my relationship with my husband and my kids and with God. And it was getting in the way of who I am created to be and what God calls me to do. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. If Ash Wednesday slipped past you in the busyness of the week, maybe today you're taking the opportunity to think about your Lenten discipline. Or you've made it through the first couple of days And you're wondering how you're going to last the rest of this Lenten season. Together, we're standing at a threshold, a liminal space, a time where we might be able to just make out the future through the fog, but the fullness of it is still obscured. And into that fog, we hear the story of Jesus' baptism and temptation. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Word of God, word of life. Now, since it's Lent... You're maybe thinking that we're going to focus on the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness and you're going to get all the gory details about how tempted I was those first few weeks uh, by the wine sitting in the wine cabinet. 
But in Mark, the details are limited, and so are the details I'm going to give you. But I will share a little bit more later on. We could always add in the details from the other Gospels, right? And then we could talk about how we're all better, uh, we all could be better at resisting temptation. I could give you a few tips and tricks that I've learned uh, about how to be like Jesus and avoid temptation, and good luck with your Lenten practice. But I think that gets it all wrong. My internet colleague, Rev Lizzie, as she goes by, posted this explanation of Lent that I appreciated. She said, Lent is a season of repentance, or metanoia in Greek. Metanoia does not mean shame, or pain, or self-flagellation, beating ourselves up for the choices we've made. It literally means turn around. So Lent is a time to turn from that which we do to oppress, harm, or ignore our neighbors. Lent is also a time to remember our mortality. It is not a time to hustle for our worthiness or diet our way into belovedness or fix something fundamentally broken. It is a time to remember exactly how loved we are as a mortal, as a mortal being capable of harm. It is a deep and powerful miracle. I hope that that is as much good news for you as it was for me. This is why we hear about Jesus' baptism again before we hear about Jesus' temptation. When Jesus is baptized, God rips apart the heavens. The Spirit descends and enters into Jesus, and we hear that declaration that Jesus is God's beloved child. And it is only after this that Jesus is compelled out into the wilderness. And Jesus survives in the wilderness because of God's promise and God's Spirit that is present that empowers Jesus to resist temptation. And so we are in this liminal space, the space between, on the edge of something new, taking a risk, perhaps, taking up the opportunity to turn around, to turn around from those behaviors that oppress and hurt our neighbors, and ourselves to return to who God made us to be, to remember our status as beloved and to be equipped with the Holy Spirit and the strength to survive the wilderness that awaits us. Our Lenten refrain for this week is again and again God meets us. And I think we can all make a list of those times where we were at the very end of our rope. We had come to the end of ourselves over one thing or another. We didn't know what was going to happen next, and God met us in that place. The day that I signed up for the group 21-day alcohol-free challenge, I was standing on one of those edges, and I was scared. I was scared about what I didn't know. I was scared that I would fail. I was scared about facing all those things that I was trying to drown out with the wine. And it turns out that those things had learned how to swim, which is why I wanted more and more. But as I talked with my small group, as I did the daily journaling, as I rode the waves of those cravings, I discovered just how close God was. Even when I thought that I was the only one experiencing this, the only one feeling this way. And it is that closeness that then has enabled me not only to share this with you, but share this with others and become of service to others in the recovery community. This is the common thread in Jesus' baptism and temptation, God's closeness. In pivotal moments, God is extraordinarily present with Jesus and those around him. We see this all through the scriptures. And Caroline Lewis writes that this is where our promise lies. 
Not necessarily that we have the power to defend and deflect temptation. Not that we are capable of taking on Satan in the wilderness all on our own. Not so much that our baptism is a guarantee that will shore up the walls to keep out all that which seeks to threaten our belief, our trust, and our relationship with God. It's that now, all battles with evil, with that which tempts us. The game is changed because God is present. We're not asked to do this on our own. And that can be a major misinterpretation of why we give things up for Lent, right? We give them up to prove how good we are or how strong we are or that we can push through on willpower. But that's not the point of Lent. Not to achieve a weight loss or uh, meet a fitness goal or uh, some other self-improvement strategy all on our own. It is to draw us back to God, to remind us where our strength truly lies, and into the embrace of forgiveness and trust that God gives. The Holy Spirit enters Jesus at his baptism, just like the Holy Spirit enters us at our baptisms. And that particular presence of God is what empowers Jesus to overcome the temptations of the desert. And because we too are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we have that same access to the presence of God. Just like Jesus, God meets us at the waters of baptism and claims us. God meets us at that liminal space of the water's edge at the threshold of something new and names us beloved. God meets us in the midst of our reluctance and our doubt, our eagerness and our weariness, and proclaims that we are good and loved. Again and again, God meets us where we are. But God doesn't leave us there. We shift from sinking sand to solid ground from navel-gazing to community, from personal pietism to justice for all, and away from behaviors both personal and systematic that frustrate God's vision for the world. As I've grown over these past six months, as as I've learned over these past six months, I've learned that it might not be my fault but it is my responsibility to take care of what I did during my addiction. It's not my fault that I was addicted, but it is my responsibility to do something about it, and I can with God's help. And then it moves me into caring for others suffering in that same way wanting to drown things out. Maybe it's not with alcohol, but with other things. Scrolling on Facebook, binge-watching TV, um, all sorts of things we can use to drown out what we don't want to face. If that's the case for you and you want some extra support, let me know. I'm happy to talk with you and to walk with you on this journey. Whether it's big or little, The door to my office and my email is always open. And as we think about what edge we're standing on today, what leap we're getting ready to make, I wonder what it would look like for us to claim this blessing for ourselves and then practice in to living the blessing of belovedness each day of Lent. What are you being moved to turn away from so that you can live into the life that God is calling you to for yourself and for your neighbors? How might seeing ourselves as beloved transform how we see others in our life and in our community? What edge are you standing at today? And how is God meeting you there? 
as we cross with Christ into the landscape of Lent and into the mystery that lies ahead of us, I offer this blessing from Jan Richardson. May we know at least this about ourselves, that our name too is beloved. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise that this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of sun or the fall of night. But I can tell you on this path there will be help. I can tell you that on this way there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence whisper our name. Beloved, beloved, beloved. Amen. We continue to give thanks, dear friends in Christ, for your generosity to our mission and ministry. As we enter these 40 days of Lent, we are grateful and humbled at the way you support us and our work on the radio and on Facebook and through phone calls and visits and and now in the sanctuary again. Your continued gifts can be mailed to P.O. Box 69 in Wadena, Minnesota. They can be dropped off at the church during the week. And you can also visit wadinaemmanuel.org, click on the giving link, and explore virtual giving at this time. Our service continues with hymn number 815, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, ELW number 815. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day
the night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. We cry to you for help, O God, praying for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. We pray for the church in this season of Lent, for our denomination, our full communion partners, for the congregation and other congregations in our community, for anyone preparing for baptism. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the wild beasts, the birds, the domestic animals, and every living creature, for the wilderness areas on this continent, for rain and snow, enough, but not too much. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those countries, cities, and villages that have been ravaged by floods and blizzards and incredible cold. We pray for those who provide leadership in these times of chaos. We pray for disaster relief workers and aid organizations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for people in prison, for those who live in long-term care facilities, for the homeless, the sick. We pray especially today for Sherry Anderson, Jean Beck, Charles Carlson, Gary Johnson, Peggy Lewin, Craig Reese, Dorothy Teal, Dennis Teedy, Gary Burnt, Joan Clark, Doreen Johnson, Robert Kiffey, Sue Ellen Kiffey, Kia Neuerberg, Pete and Karen Paulson, Matt Schiller, Jean Tullogson, Dick Wood, Eugene Wood, and Dolores Yorick. We pray for those who are dying and those who will die today. And we also lift before you, Lord, those who grieve. We pray especially for Carol Wallace and family as they grieve the death of Carol's husband, Leo. We pray also for those who serve in our military, along with their families at home, asking that you would bless and keep them. Be with Max Labar, James and John Close, Victor Barbado, Joel Bertelson, Sean Evans, Joe and Samantha Holweger, Karsten Jennings, and Eric Naley. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for this community, for single people, for married couples, for those who are divorced, for widows and widowers, for children and youth, for those who come before you right now in need of good news. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the everlasting covenant you have made with all flesh, and we remember our ancestral loved ones who know the fulfillment of your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Now is the acceptable time to offer our prayers to you, God of grace and truth. Receive them in your mercy and grant us all we need, in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Dear friends, please greet one another with a word of peace. Share the peace with those in the room with you, and reach out using your preferred method of communication to share a word of peace with fellow believers in Christ.
Today, as we gather, we are gathered across time and space. We're gathered also in hope, and some may be feeling despair. However it is that we gather, there is room for us at this table we call communion. As you join us now on the radio, if you're gathering with us on February 21st, 2021, this first Sunday in Lent, you are part of this community of believers. So gather some bread from your home and some wine and juice if you have it. And believe in faith that that bread you are holding, that wine, that juice you are holding, becomes the body and blood of Christ. In this meal, we receive Christ himself and are fed with love and forgiveness. And we become love and forgiveness that will transform the world. God will make it so. Friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to the disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave them... He gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please let us share this meal with one another. Share it with those in the room with you, speaking these words, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. If you have only bread at home, be assured that even in this one element, Jesus is fully present, loving, and forgiving you. And if you're the only one in the room, hear these words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. However you are receiving this meal today, may you be blessed by God's mercy, love, and forgiveness. Let us come to Christ, who is broken and poured out for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive this blessing. The blessing of Almighty God, the wisdom and power of Christ Jesus, and the light of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 613 in your ELW hymnals, Thy Holy Wings, ELW number 613. Thy holy wings, O Savior, spread gently over me, and let me rest.
Thank you for joining us for this morning's worship. There are lots of ways to stay connected with Emmanuel throughout the week. Check out our website, wadinaemmanuel.org, for links to YouTube, podcasts, and worship at home resources. We'd also like to invite you to join us on our new Facebook campus, an all online community to grow in faith and discipleship. Just head to Facebook, search for Emmanuel Lutheran Wadina, Minnesota then click on the Groups tab to request to join. We're excited to see what God will do with this community, and we hope that you will be part of it too.